Joining me now, Senator Lindsey Graham, former chairman of the Judiciary Committee. Senator Graham, great to have you here today. Several things that we Thank want you. to talk to you about on the show uh, today. So tell me a little bit about your reaction to this latest Durham investigation indictment. I tell you what, if I, um, if I were Fusion GPS and Christopher Steele, I'd be worried about right now. Why does this matter? So as, uh, as your previous guest said, the Carter Page warrant was issued uh, in September, I believe, of 2016, based on the Christopher Steele dossier. Everybody has said, including uh, the Horowitz report, that without the dossier, there would not have been enough information to get a warrant. So before right. September 2016, there was plenty of concerns about the reliability of the dossier. But in January and March of 2017, the Russian subsource tells the FBI that a lot of this is made up, it's not reliable, it's bar talk. And here's where criminal liability, I think, lies. I'm not so much saying there's a conspiracy by the FBI to cook up all this stuff, but I do believe the FBI withheld from the court its sculptory information. I find it hard to believe that the people who interviewed the Russian subsource in January and March, and it was known by then that the whole dossier was unreliable, that that didn't go up to the top. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for people in the FBI that knew about the fraud of the dossier in January and March to come forward and say, I told higher ups, because they got a, a warrant in April of 2017 after the Russian subsource said it's a bunch of garbage. Yeah. And I can't help but think about the moment when Jim Comey, the FBI yes. director, goes to President Trump and says, look, let me, you know, pull you aside here. What, you know, the FBI has been yeah. doing this investigation and boy, this is really ugly, the stuff that they are learning, right? And, and puts it in front of him. And then that leaked, that he had told him that. And then you have a whole cycle of stories that get printed in every newspaper yes. and blog around the nation. So I think, are, do you believe that there are questions for him to answer now, knowing what we are learning about how many holes were in this stuff, even at that point? You know, remember, he testified under oath, and if you listen to James Comey, he had no idea what was going on with an investigation of the president-elect of the United States. He claimed not to know that the Russian subsource disavowed the reliability of the dossier. But here's what's more disturbing. Right. In, in July, they send over from the CIA to the FBI concerns that Hillary Clinton may be using people in Russia to uh, create a false narrative about Trump being colluding with the Russians. And that was uh, sent to Comey and struck, and neither one of them did a damn thing with it. And this was in July of 2016, before they got the first warrant. Yeah, well, uh, there's a lot of questions about their motivation and whether or not they wanted to dig any further to find out whether or not this stuff was true. Uh, and digging into things is the job of the FBI. That's what yes. they're supposed to do uh, to protect the American people. Um, Senator, don't go away. We have a lot more to talk to you about. Joining me now once again, Senator Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Okay, 1,200, okay. Uh, 1200 is, is, is what they're dealing with right now. Senator, thank you, and thanks to Chad Pergram, who always keeps us honest on all there these details. Go. So, uh, Senator, you, you voted in favor of the infrastructure bill, mm -hmm. but you just heard Nancy Pelosi there. She and many Democrats, I think, are a little bit rattled by what happened on Tuesday. They want to push together both bills, and they want to do it quickly. What do you say? Well, number one, uh, I heard somebody in the background say that these bills have been looked at, the, the socialist spending bill. That's not true. It doesn't have a Congressional Budget Office score. The Wharton School of Finance, not exactly a right-wing institution, claims that the bill is not $1.75 trillion, but almost $4 trillion. So here's the bottom line. There are two voices in Nancy Pelosi's ear. One is the squad saying, you better pass this bill, uh, you better pass this socialist agenda for America, or we're going to turn on you. And the other voice is the people from Virginia, Pennsylvania, Minneapolis, 
uh, Buffalo, New York, saying we've had enough of this big government liberalism. I think she's more worried about the squad than she is listening to the results uh, from Tuesday night. And these are purple and blue states. It's not like South Carolina is telling you to take a pass and slow down. It's people in really blue areas saying we've had enough of this spending, 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 expanding the government. We're really worried about inflation, and this bill, this socialist spending bill they may vote on tonight is pouring gasoline on inflation. To any Democrat who claims to be a moderate, if you vote for the socialist spending package tonight, you're going to get your ass beat, and you deserve it. So uh, speaking of the squad, here's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She thinks that what happened in Virginia was, was just all the fault <laughs> of playing everything too moderate. Listen to this. Yes. I think that the results show the limits of trying to run a fully 100% super moderated campaign that does not excite, speak to, or energize a progressive base. <laughs> That's what she says, Senator. What do you say to her? I think that she's the most tone deaf person in America. She believes something to the point that she's blind when it comes to where the American people are. In Minneapolis, they tried to abolish the police department. 70% of the people say, no, we'd like to reform the police, but we don't want to abolish it. Her candidate in Buffalo, New York, an avowed socialist for mayor, mm -hmm. got beat by a write-in candidate. The president mm -hmm. of the New Jersey Senate, a longtime Democrat, got beat by a guy that spent $153. She thinks the problem is that they're not liberal enough if you listen to her and march to her tune, you're going to have a wipeout like you've never seen before. And here's the really sad news. If you do what AOC is wanting the Democratic Party to do, you're going to hurt the economy, put a lot of people out of work and create inflation uh, never ending. So before I let you go, just real quick on that, Moody's put out an analysis. They said that the new spending would support a stronger GDP and jobs. Quick thought on that before I let you go, sir. It's a bunch of garbage. Uh, uh, this, this will <laughs> create in inflation higher than it is today. I don't mind working with Democrats, but if you pass this socialist spending bill, you're going to pour gasoline on an inflation fire and you're going to get your butt kicked in the next election because you're not listening to the people. You ignore the American people at your own per peril. That's true for Republicans and Democrats, but particularly true for Nancy Pelosi. If you, if you dance to the AO AOC tune, uh, you're going to get wiped out. We'll see what happens. Senator, thank you. Always good to thank see you. you. Senator Lindsey Graham you. from South Carolina. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you.